on today's episode. You can see by the plethora of antennas arrayed here that I have a wide range of interests in the drone world, um, FPV, general Wi-Fi things, alternative antennas for transmitters on 2.4 gig, forays into LoRa, and that works on 866 megahertz, interests in GSM, I've got a little GSM project, and many, many other things. Obviously, what they all have in common are antennas. It's often difficult if you just found this antenna lying around in a drawer. What frequency is it? We have no idea. There's nothing, no marking on there. Generally, the only way is to use a piece of test equipment to work out the, the frequency that the antenna is working on. That type of equipment is usually very, very expensive. This device, which is a vector impedance analyzer, is relatively inexpensive. Do remember to keep the little protective sheath there for the SMA connector. You don't want any dust or dirt getting in, in inside there. And what does it do? Uh, to turn it on, it's the control and the power button. And we can see the main screen. So we've got the, the frequency here. It can measure the resistance and impedance of the connection. Obviously the VSWR or the voltage standing wave ratio. For this video we're just going to be concentrating on the VSWR and the impedance. If we press the M button we get to uh, a nice display here by default on uh, VSWR here ranging from 1 which is obviously perfect uh, up to up to 6 and you, you've got a scale here that you can you can change. So rather than just waffling on Let's put an antenna on there and I'll show you how to use it. This is a common 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, this one I actually use on my Hubson Quad controller, which I modified. The first important point is to always check what type of SMA connector you have uh, on your antenna. The device itself comes with a standard SMA type but you can see that that um, doesn't have the pin and neither does the antenna. You're going to need an adapter. On the subject of adapters, being as there are both SMA and reverse polarized SMA, you get a huge number of different combinations. And I've got a selection here. And in fact, I've done a, a video about this as well. And this enables me to connect practically anything to anything else, including SMA to, to BNC for, for test equipment. In this particular case, what's needed is this adapter here. You can see it's got a pin to go into the vector analyzer and also a pin at this end to go into the antenna. Let's get that screwed on. As before, turning it on takes us to the sort of main information page. We press the M button to get to our graphical display. What we can see here is a scan from the lowest frequency that this supports, which is 137.5 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz. The trace on the display there is uh, a measurement of the SWR at times one. So it goes from one, which is perfect, up to, up to six. And we can see that there are a number of troughs there indicating the, the different frequencies at which the antenna is resonating. So not only at its fundamental frequency, but also you get dips at the harmonics thereof. We know that this is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna, and I've set the, the marker point, which is this little tiny triangle down the bottom here, to 2.4 gigs. And we can see that it's indicating the lowest SWR at that point. Now that we know that, we can zoom in on this area here uh, to get a more accurate reading. To do that, we can press down on the button at the top and that will take us through the various fields. So what we want to change first is the start frequency. So as we increase that value there, we can see the display changing in real time. What are we up to now? To 2.237, so 2.2 gigahertz to 2.7 gigahertz, if we now change the upper frequency so we can see the dip pretty much in the center there. Now, if we adjust our multiplying factor, now it's on the, the 0.1 times and we can clearly see the, the dip in the graph there. If we now go back to our frequency marker, we can see it going down there. And we change the 
last digit. On the top here, we can see that it's, it's almost dead on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It's measuring 2.399.5 megahertz. We can now go to the front screen and we've just left it on 2.4. We can see that the SWR is almost 1, which is fantastic, and that both the resistance and the impedance are 50 ohms, which is, is correct. On the subject of the SWR, 1 is obviously perfect and you'll probably never see that. 1.2, 1.3 is usually around the sort of average and anything perhaps up to maybe two, depending on the, on the type of antenna, is acceptable. But obviously, the closer to one, the better. I'm going to change this now for the GSM antenna and show you how that works. Just before we move on, a word about the environment. No, not that environment. Regular viewers of the channel will notice that I'm not filming this in my usual location. The reason for that being is that the desk that I use is metal. Also, the area is full of electronic equipment, which is causing some strange interference with the readings. It's most important to test antennas in an environment which is as close to that in which they will be used as possible. So if that's outside, then it's best to do it outside. If you have to do it inside, as I was when filming, then find a location with the minimal amount of electronics to avoid any interference. If you do see strange results, then you need to chase them down because there is always an underlying cause. Your results will be worse than useless if you do not pay attention to these things. Here is the trace of the GSM antenna. If you have a random antenna and you're not sure what it is, then just set the lowest frequency and the highest frequency, put it to uh, SWR with a factor of times 10, and that will indicate, if it's within the range of this device, where you have the resonant points. Here clearly we can see that there are two. If we change to our little indicator pointer, we can see that there's a, a dip here, which is at 1.8 gigahertz. And if we go down, there's another dip here at 837 megahertz. So we have two resonant points for this antenna. Let's zoom in and see if we can identify more closely what those frequencies are. Now we're scanning from 737 up to 2 gigahertz, and we can see the two resonant points there. So the one closest to perfect SWR is the higher frequency, somewhere around 1900 using our pointer now to get a more accurate reading. The resonant point here appears to be at 1.85 gigahertz, uh, which is obviously a GSM frequency. If we now go to look at the other resonant point, it is no surprise that it's around 880 megahertz, so 900 megahertz is the other GSM frequency. You can see how useful this device is in identifying antennas and being able to, to measure them. So you can do good comparisons against antennas to work out which is best and to see whether they're actually on the right frequency. Some of these LoRa antennas uh, could be supplied with the wrong frequency. Uh, there are different frequencies for LoRa in the US and, and, and Europe, and maybe the supplier has put the wrong antenna in. So it's a good idea to check that and obviously check the receiver and the transmitter are, are close enough. Unfortunately, it doesn't help us out when it comes to the 5.8 uh, gigahertz world, the upper frequency being only 2.7. However, all is not lost. I've set the scan from 2.5 gigahertz to 2.7 gigahertz, and we can see that there is a little resonant point there, which is going to be approximately half of 5.8. What we're looking at, similarly to the GSM antenna, this will resonate at the harmonics of, of 5.8. If we now swap this antenna for our unknown antenna, we can see again a resonant point around 2.5 gigahertz, but the SWR at 6 indicates to us that this is a harmonic. So this antenna is 5.8 gigahertz. So although we cannot measure it directly, we can uh, eliminate it as being 2.4 or, or lower. I hope you found that interesting. It's the best way to be able to identify 
problems with a with an antenna and worth checking your antennas regularly anyway. It's certainly a lot less expensive to buy one of these than it is a new model.